This DYM podcast is brought to you by Leader Treks. Go to serve, return ready to lead. On a Leader Treks mission trip, you'll serve and get out of your comfort zone, and through the program, your students will learn how to lead. They will bring that leadership and confidence back to your youth ministry, and it will make a difference for the rest of the year. Learn more and sign up at leadertrex.org. And since we love DYM listeners, they always get 10% off resources by using the code DYM10. That's DYM10 at leadertrex.org. This is episode 322. My name is Doug Fields. To my right is a senior pastor, King of Supertones, Jason Carson, uh, co-host Josh Griffin. Hello. Over there sporting the nice um, free t-shirt. Can you tell? No surprise. It's tough to get around your biceps. And uh, the queen of all things, Katrina Katie Edwards. And this is our 322nd episode. Wow. And this is going to be a short show. Ten because years we've been doing this show. Because 321 took too long. Yeah, mm-hmm. thanks a lot. And, and your, your pee break took a long time. No, it was, shows. it was, well, when I went to do the pee break, I looked at my, we we're trying to pick a wedding date for Cassie around my oh, speaking calendar. And the one, the one time we wanted it. The venue wasn't available. No. Oh, they know what venue they want already. They just got engaged last week. Congratulations, by the way. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Dude, yeah, that's empty the... nest and now last kid married. That's yeah. big. To so many greats, you have like oh, the greatest in law kids. I know. Oh my gosh. I know. I'd We're say gonna... two for three. That's good. <laughs> that's a good. <laughs> Definitely three for three on on this one. You are. So we actually, if Cassie broke up with him, we'd we'd rather have him. <laughs> <laughs> keep, keep him and be like, sorry, babe, you're out. Yeah. Sorry. Right. Yeah. Um, Do you know him? So great. Yes, I adore him. He He's one of your leaders, right? He was, yes. Yeah. He's so great. He's, He's awesome. unbelievable. Yeah. I love him. <clears throat> anyway. And he's so, incredibly attractive. He is. He's a beautiful man. He yeah. is. We were boy. working out together, humble brag, and he <laughs> like he tells me, I'm gonna get engaged tonight. And he's like, we're jogging the I'm out of breath, I'm trying to celebrate with him, but I'm wheezing because we're on this jog. And he's just like hair flowing in the wind, just like no effortless. He's a stud. Yeah. Oh, that's he so wonderful. Like, oh, but he loves Jesus, and that's a good he thing. Does. He is a stud, like physically. Physically, he's a stud, but yeah. he's also he loves. He's Jesus like the whole treats her, here. treats her well. Ah, congrats! Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So anyway, plus I'm going to uh, Matt McGill's son's football yeah. game that starts in, in a like few minutes. One minute. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so is it going to be that sort of show, or yeah. we're just going to jump in? Let's yeah, it's, in. His, yeah. it's his last. Yeah, the last Very show. Good. Do you was... want to talk about our sponsors or no? Oh, good idea. Okay. Good idea. Yeah, orange. they pay the bills. Orange. Orange. Orange, Leader the Orange Conference. Oh, the Orange com. Conference. April, yeah. join us. Register by December 14th and save $70. Plus it sells out, so sign up quick. Yeah, it does sell out. I don't even know why they promote it because it sells out. But they do have, <laughs> Orange does have um, dates available for their 2018 high school camp. Yes. Highschoolcamp.com. Com. And if you, you can't, if you can't get into that, mm-hmm. then you bring your kids to Granger, Indi- Indiana. Student leadership with conference. Student Leadership Conference. Well, what's on the screen behind? Oh, you mean this? Yeah. oh, look at that. <laughs> With our sponsors and our friends and our partners, Leader Tracks and Bethel College. Which is great because they get wow. to stay, kids get to stay in the dorms. Oh, that's exciting. And that's it's only 10 bucks a night. Yeah, it's a cool logo. It's a great it's deal. Triangles that's so cool. Yeah, we've updated it since the last show. That's nice. Yeah. It looks so good. <laughs> and YM360. Oh, and YM360. Okay. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, they're doing a bunch of D-Now stuff. If you're hosting a D-Now, which is a winter retreat or spring retreat, whatever, uh, make sure kind you... Kind of an in-home retreat. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. T-shirts. You can do guys, whatever you want. Well, you don't have to even, you barely have to show up with D-Now. Now because YM360 does all the work for you. YM360.com slash D now. Please don't say my name. 
Let's call. Let's call, let's pick a name for him or her. Okay. Uh, Stan. Stan. Oh, good one. Um, I'm wondering. Margaret. I'm wondering how you would approach She's rejuvenating eight. a tired, wounded, and nearly burnout volunteer team. I'm one month into my new job at my church and recently learned that the majority of my volunteers were ready to leave the ministry before my predecessor announced that he was leaving. Apparently, many of the volunteers stuck around during the transition because they felt they owed it to the students mm-hmm. and couldn't bear to see the ministry die out while the church searched for a new youth pastor. From the sounds of it, the team has uh, been overworked, underappreciated, and undervalued. Mm-hmm. In some cases, the former youth pastor's personal life began to affect the unity and morale of the group, and many of the volunteers were personally wounded by his actions. The team genuinely seems excited for me to come aboard and have bent over backwards to ensure this transition has gone smoothly. They seem hopeful, but I am still worried about their wounds, which have quite not healed. Uh, what advice would you have as I attempt to show these awesome leaders how much they're valued and appreciated? How can I show respect to my predecessor, who is actually a friend of mine, while working to undo the damage that was done? Thanks for all you do. DYM has been a huge blessing uh, for me and both my current and previous ministries. Hmm. Okay, Stan. That's great. Let's help Stan with the answer to this. Katie, what do you do? Volunteers burning out? Well, it seems like the whole team. The whole team, yeah. I mean, gosh, I think it would be so worth your time to meet with each one of them individually and just to sit with them and just be a listener, be a sounding board, let them vent, let them be sad, let them be whatever they are and don't have any expectations. Or agenda. Yeah, or agenda. Just Just be be a real listener Mm -hmm. in those times. And you will learn so much and care so much for people in just being silent (laughs) and asking good questions, you know, like asking thoughtful questions in those times. Um, People feel so cared for when they feel heard yep. and um, and I don't think it's dishonoring to anyone who came before you to just meet people where they're at you don't have to if they talk to you about him then be a listener and a sounding board you don't have to you don't have to talk about him or you don't want to talk about refer him. back uh, to anything yeah. you know so. I would call it the dark days yeah totally oh, you remember before yeah. I came <laughs> the dark, dark days, days. So, <laughs> Schmuck Doug Fields was here. Oh, thank goodness we're done with those days. Mm. <laughs> mm. We never said that. We never said That's that. Right. Um, I just love people. I mean, just just love people and give them yeah. more time. You you will nurse people back to health, and or you might help people move on. You know, there might be some people who are so wounded or who do need to take a break. Just and tired of her, yeah. so. I think that's the no agenda piece is, you know, the goal is not to maintain or retain every single volunteer that you have right now. It's to like meet everybody where they're at. You might want to retain some and you might want to help some take a break or, you know, that that's okay too. So I think just meeting each person where they're at, you'll nurse people, you know. Well, and one, that's great wisdom, but let's also acknowledge how difficult that is to not have that agenda of wanting to keep them. It's so hard. So It's so hard when you're in a desperate place for leaders, which when yep. you first come on and wanting to have team, you know, I, I understand being in a desperate place to fill small group roles or camp cabins or yep. those things. Yep. And then, you know, you're also asking people to move on in that season or yep. giving people space to breathe or that kind of thing. Right. That is not an easy place to be, but long-term health and long-term, you know, healthy team starts with you just with care probably in this situation. Yeah, it's good. And where can you find maybe some, maybe there are some people that do have some wind in their sails that you can kind of pull aside and say, hey, while we nurse this team back to health, can you kind of help me in these spaces? So maybe there's some parents that you can bring in or some other leaders and then a few that exist that you can kind of put together a little bit of a patchwork quilt team to kind of get you through the next season while you kind of nurture the team i don't know yeah yeah and if you do lose them i'd i'd revisit in a year totally yes absolutely because they they might have they might have they might just need that time away like space yeah i mean i feel like when you were still in high school katie but when i got to saddleback as soon as they announced that i was the guy half the team quit Mm -hmm. because they were holding it together. I mean, they were just like, they didn't know me from anybody. (laughs) Yeah, it's like, okay, Uh, now we can can breathe. (laughs) Yeah, now we can put our marriage back together or whatever. And uh, so I I get it. I I get the, the whole idea of, you know, 
gracious volunteers kind of keeping it together. Well, standing in the gap of well, things. Yeah. And some other options too, I would say. What if you did something with them or for them? You're heading into the holidays-ish right now. It'd be a great chance uh, to take them out for dinner and a movie or a, just yeah. a, a celebration and story night over mm -hmm. some spaghetti somewhere. It would be so fun and so good. pour into them. Uh, even these little awards that we talked about last show from Jeff Self, like mm -hmm. what if you just did an awards night and you just recognize people for their sacrifice, for their service, and then that would obviously set up some conversations that you'd be able to say, hey, I know this has been a tough season privately, yeah. and tell me what your future looks like, and we love you, and thank you, and so I think there's a couple interesting ideas this time of year that might be really good, too. Fun, um, fun with no agenda is is yeah. always a good thing. Yeah. I, I, I think, build a team. especially in the church, where we have such high expectations sometimes yeah. of people doing things or whatever, and so having time with fun can be such a, fun is such a healing thing, it's it creates inside jokes it creates yeah. unity you know it's something that you know it's a tool for sure yeah so. absolutely I'd say the same line just feed them you know like, so if it's something super simple even if you don't have a budget like if you have team meetings or something get them together have an ice cream sunday bar or something and just say hey just wanted to appreciate you guys you know get, gather people together with food and fun so make it light it's good yeah good stuff. have super tones playing in the background mm. uh, <clears throat> itunes go to itunes buy them now new album no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> you hear royalties still from it's pretty small yeah at this point when you yes. say pretty small though come on it's in the five digits <laughs> every month <laughs> Do you get no, monthly it's, it's, it's honestly quarterly. around, you know, $73 uh, biannually. Yeah. Per person. Yeah. Every no, six months. Like three of us. Do you yeah. split $73? No, we each get Oh, it. okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's a date that's night. Legit. It's great. It's a couple yeah. date nights. Yeah. It's, yeah. Couple, it's, it's not, gas. not anywhere near what DYM authors get. Yeah, I was going to say, Jason, right. you should get your stuff on DYM. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Do you guys have any resources for senior pastors? <laughs> but we don't have a lot for senior pastors. <laughs> what do we have? Color your own tie. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's something fun. How to have a conversation with a youth pastor. You How to be that. a fun senior pastor. <laughs> yeah. I should write that. Be fun and build team. This is from <laughs> Augie Mueller. Augie says, I'm a DYM Week 2 alum, and I'm so thankful for your awesome pouring out into people that week. How amazing was Week 2? Am I right? <laughs> it was so good. They were both great. Time. It was no Week 1, but it was a terrific time. Full of refreshing okay. and wonderful opportunities. Over the last year, are we going to do DYM 100 next year? Let's decide. Allison, do you have a date for us? No, are we going to do it first? Yeah, do, it? do you think? It's so fun. All right, we're three for three. We're doing it. We're doing two, three. I don't know. Three. Oh three. Back to back to back. I Do voted you for the location in Maui. And I, I, I think it was I'm in. Do you excellent. Want to go? Let's go. It got a lot of likes. It got a lot of likes. Anyway, full of refreshing and wonderful opportunities. Over the last year, I've noticed a few people, including myself, being let go from a church suddenly. Some have even written on the podcast about getting advice. I love this, and I love the community that DYM has on Facebook it is as they provide a lot of support for us. But here is my question. Long-winded ramp up to the question. How can area youth... He wrote that, not... Oh, good. Yeah. Sure, yeah. Wow. I didn't see it. On yeah, there. I saw it. Okay. I saw it. <laughs> I, saw it. <laughs> I, I saw the parentheses. Kind of got you there, Fields. Okay. No, he wrote that. <laughs> How can area youth pastors support a youth pastor who has, who was fired, let go, doors locked, uh, and told not to come back from a church? What are some things long term that youth pastors can do that are in the area to uplift and encourage and helping the healing process, mm -hmm. even beyond the first couple weeks? That, what a nice question. I that love that you asked that question. Yeah, way to go, Augie. It's weird because I think when someone is fired, you would expect the community to rally. Like, oh, these are one of our guys, one of our team, this is one of our people. And I think the opposite happens a little bit. I think when someone is let go, especially doors locked and fired, I think people tend to have a tendency to recoil a little bit. Like, oh, what's wrong with you or whatever. I, I feel like I see that in our community sometimes, the opposite of what you would expect. But, you know, just an observation. I like the question because I think that doesn't always happen. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I talked to someone at week one, the UN 100, that just said he was just let go. And mm-hmm. without explanation, he begged the elders, begged the pastor, like, why was I let go? And, you know, and the fact that he, like, brought it up to me and reached out. There was a few of us guys around, like, we prayed for him. And it was awesome just to connect. But, like, I think if, if you are in that situation, you've got to reach out to people. And if it, if, especially in that kind of community of DYM community, Facebook group, like, it's such a good group. And for, for other people to love on you and to encourage you, I think you got to do it. Yeah. Mm. I think it's time when you need each other more yeah. than ever. Yeah. So, I don't know. I think what, what can you do to support a person like that is the question, though? I would say initiate reaching out. Yeah. I would say if you're in a good place and things are good, yeah. we have a tendency to like look forward and we're on to the next event mm-hmm. and on to the next thing. We're not necessarily going, oh, one of ours is, is hurt and fallen or wounded or whatever. So stop and care for them. I, yeah, if you I would also admit them. I'm not good at that. I'm not. If you have a relationship with them, I think obviously you, you don't, you don't pretend you don't know about it. You mm-hmm. connect to them. But yeah. I, as I read the question, I thought, I, I wonder you know, Katie, you're you're in the trenches right now. If that happened, um, would you guys hire me? <laughs> yeah, I'd hire you in a minute. Oh, great! Yeah, okay. you could, could, be you you could, you could come get a job. Here. Yeah, you could replace Josh quickly. Um, <laughs> the co-founder. Oh, wait, you could be a co-owner, but you could never be the co-founder. That's true. I couldn't. Um, but we will give you this. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, let, Jason, when I was youth pastor down the street, you were youth pastor down the street. Yeah. Okay, let's say you got fired. Okay. Right. A miracle didn't happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and we have a relationship. I, I was just thinking, you know what, would it be healing to go, you know, hey, Jason, would you come, would you be willing to come talk to my youth group? Oh, man. Like, wow. While you're in the process so of figuring out what's honored. the next season of life, come come be a part of my, my youth ministry team. That'd and, be amazing. And, and the bottom line is, I know you, and you're someone that would do something like that. The problem is, how many people out there wouldn't do something? And maybe I'm one of the guys that wouldn't do something like that. We should do something like Why that. Why wouldn't you? I'm just, it, maybe it's not natural. Maybe I'm not thinking that way out of the gate or something. Like, oh, that guy got canned or, you know, oh, he was, you know, has, he's messed up and now he's bitter and I'm not going to have him come to my, oh, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. you know, is whatever. It's almost like there's a mark on that person. Well, yeah, I, I, that see, is. to me, it feels different if you have a relationship with him. If you're, oh, yeah, yes. If you're well, in a community or okay. network. If that ha- happened, how honoring would that be? A person who's wounded, defeated, frustrated, doors are locked to their church, they're out. And someone says, you're not out, you're just, you're, you're whatever, come over, teach my youth group. It'd be amazing. Yeah. That would be an amazing thing. Yeah. It'd be super Plus, great. you get the night off, so everybody wins. That's a good thing. <laughs> I have to write a talk this so, week. So if you did reach out to somebody that was obviously wounded and bitter, like, do you have to screen that? Do you have to, like, well, have a talk yeah, about what they're going to say? All, all yeah. comes down to the relationship. Yeah, if, like so how well you know if that. you and I were in a, you know, monthly youth ministry network <laughs> luncheon and we'd done life together and we'd done camps together, whatever, we're, you know, friends yeah. in a network. Sure. I think I would know, like, dude, we're doing a thing on, on friendship. Can you come, you know, just let's talk about our friendship mm-hmm. and would you speak on friendship? I think, I think you would just even that gesture. I don't think you would yep. turn point number two into, you know, the church doesn't allow you to have friends, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hate everybody. Hey, my old it friends was a staff I that think... fired me last week. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I used to have friends until I was let go. Hey, your only friend is going to be good. Jesus. <laughs> and trust the people sitting next to you. <laughs> oh, shit. And then you just show them a knife in your back. <laughs> What a nice question. Um, hey, dudes and Katie. This is from Jenna. How do you say her last name? Stanley. Bajusic? Bajusic. That's Bajusic. amazing. Um, and 
write your questions to podcast at downloadyouthministry.com yeah. <laughs> because we want to answer your questions. You can ask questions about like what we've been talking about, or as I mentioned on the last show, start sending questions about what, what do you, what do you need help on with the DYM games app or anything? Those little specific mm-hmm. niche questions we can answer quickly. What was the email address they should send things to? That's podcast at downloadyouthministry.com. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's podcast. I know her. I talked to her on the phone. Really? Mm-hmm. Katie. She says, please don't use my name. Oh. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Okay. Yeah. Um, but first of all, we joined uh, with DYM Gold members this year, and it's awesome. Well, Thank well, you well. for the work that goes into this organization. For context, I work on a team of four student ministry staff members. I know we're spoiled. Good. Wow. Yes. You know it. Uh, our middle school ministry meets on Sunday mornings, and most of our leaders for those activities are high school students. We have 15-minute meeting, which ends 15 minutes before the service begins. Recently, we've had students showing up before we're done with our leader meeting. Our student ministry director's thought is to meet for five minutes or just don't meet as a team so that our leaders can be ready to greet. I disagree and see a lot of value in our leader meetings, community training, encouragement, etc. What would you do if you were in my shoes? It's a great question. Keep the meetings moving up a few minutes. Tighten up the meetings. We, sure we had that same problem. We met before. Yeah. We started the meeting and we met after. And it was always like, well, what do we do with the kids that are early? What do we do with the kids that are still hanging out? And all of our leadership comes inside and has a meeting. So we had to deal with that all the time. For me, that leader, me personally, those leadership meetings to, to connect before and after our our youth group night was so huge. Yeah, it was it was vital. I yeah, mean, we you were so good at that. I know. I remember, I remember seeing those and going, "Man, you did those well." I just wouldn't uh, sacrifice it, but I would also, eat. boy, what if what if you have multiple services and you need to meet in a smaller window and kids are showing up? I think it's okay for kids to wait outside a few minutes. Yeah, I mean, 15 minutes early, uh, just send one, you know, let's, if... if yeah, rotate out one leader. Yeah, maybe. rotate out one leader who's, mm-hmm. you, you pull them, you call them ahead of time and say, hey, here's what we're going to cover. Will you will you be at the door and just, you know, I mean, I was just thinking like, in in my ministry, I would say to Kathy, you know, sure, hey, babe, yeah. would, you, would you step outside or you run this meeting and I'll step outside and mm-hmm. I'll greet them until we're ready to go. Now, if, if it bleeds into the start of, you know... You've, you've run your leader meeting too long right. now. It's yeah. like a us versus them type thing. But I think that's a good good tension to experience. I like that you're, you're meeting with your leaders ahead of time and that you value that totally. time. But 15 minutes seems, yeah, seems that fair. It's okay that kids are waiting oh, yeah. a little bit too. Yeah. If leaders are showing up, <laughs> like don't kill them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're doing, keep doing if more. they are coming and that's awesome and effective, do not kill that. Yeah. You know? figure out a few, you know, a few other avenues, maybe. Yeah, that's really, that's really good. Um, okay. Gosh, there's so many to choose from. Yeah, here, let's just talk about, let's do like a quick, uh, quick answer. This is Brandon Best. Shotgun answer? I'm a like gold it. member, and so is the high school no, pastor. I'm gold uh, <laughs> What are you laughing at? Go ahead. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a gold member, and so is the high school pastor. That's double bling, baby. Double gold members. Wow, I actually like that. Double yeah. bling. Yeah. Invite them to the DY100 round three. Four. Would it be four? Yeah, we've done three. One last year, two this year. And then week one, week two. Okay. We loved DYM 100 week two, and we were praying our Baptist ways away so that we might have a chance to get a DYM tattoo like our week two brothers. <laughs> What's the um, best handoff transition ideas you can think of to move eighth grade students in middle school to the land of high school them? Yes. Mm. yes. What's the best handoff tradition ideas or transition yeah. ideas? Okay. Cool. Transition. Katie's good at this. <laughs> Step one, become really good friends with your high school pastor. Up top. Yep. I think I do think that's important. I think great relationship between the two ministry is is key to a really good handoff. Yeah. Um, Because then you feel like partners in it. It's not only about me handing off. It's about high school receiving too. So, um, a couple things that have worked for us. Our our 
rooms meet side by side. Um, and so we do this thing on the last weekend of our, for our eighth graders, we call it the walkover and it was super creative. And um, we, we kind of do our goodbye and then we walk them all over to the high school space and brought them into the high school space and then the, all the high school volunteers and people were ready to like receive them or cheer for them. Did you have caps them. and gowns or anything like that? No. But high school had donuts and um, we had donuts. We talk about high school, but it felt like this really kind of fun. Like we're literally walking them yeah. over to hand them off to you. Yeah. But then we were in that space with the high school team, yeah. which was really fun. Um, so, and then high school would do a couple of like freshman only things yeah. that we would show up to for the first 30 yeah. minutes and kind of help You'd be out, cheer them on, welcome yeah. them, introduce key, mm -hmm. key kids. You're like, oh, you're going to love this kid. He's a student leader. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. Really, really helpful. Invite high school to speak in middle school. I always mm -hmm. think that's a really fun thing. Just yeah. um, or you were our summer camp speaker a couple of years. I mean, so it's and not that even paid off big. That yeah, totally. Off big. So it's not even. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, there was no money, For but me, it was it, a real money. A real real money. It was no, awesome. Trust me, not but it camp. doesn't only have to be at the end of the year either. I think weaving in high school staff and there were yeah. times where my junior high team was away and the high school staff would fill in for us. And so students were hopefully getting to see faces and make connections all throughout the yeah. year. Yeah. So that was fun. Well, I would say, Katie, you do a really good job of leaving some of the really fun and exciting things to high school ministry too. Yeah. You don't have That's to do everything in junior high that you could do even. You say, oh, when you get to high school, you're going to love it because they do X, mm -hmm. Y, and Z event or activity or we did a series called You on the Weekend where mm -hmm. students ran everything. And you give them a little taste of that in junior high, but in high school, we blow it up. And so mm -hmm. there were some really fun things. E even the way we did summer camp was very different. Mm -hmm. So that in the transition, you were always saying, you're going to love this. You're going to love this. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I'm going to love that how much you love junior high ministry, but wait to get to high school. Part of it totally. was too, you just were positive about them moving forward. Mm -hmm. And I think that's good. Instead of like, oh, it's so sad and we're going to miss you, which you do. It was all like forward, positive, loving. Yeah, they walk. It's the trail of tears over in high school. They walk yeah. over crying. But yeah, <laughs> they do. No, but they do because junior high is so important. I do love that. Oh, there today we were we were talking to um, a guy who actually is one of your DYM authors, Travis Prouty, who does cool. a lot of game stuff. Yeah. And I found one of his games on DYM. I said, "Hey, this is such a fun game." He goes, "Oh yeah, it's a tradition. We play that every Thanksgiving." I'm like, "Oh good. I'm so glad I asked you because we won't play that." You oh, know, so yeah. even. I thought through. you were trying to get it for free from him. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> guaranteed. Yeah. It's well, uh, it's called it. Turkey Hunt. Yeah. If you don't have it for Thanksgiving, I think you should get it. Anyways, I, I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> but I was like, okay, we won't play it because I know it's a tradition for high school. So even there's little things throughout the year that actually set up transition really beautifully. Yeah. So I don't know, some things like that yeah. to think about. It's great. It's great. You guys, we said we had to do a short show. Well, there it is. That is short. Nice. Short, that short, short, good. short, short, good. Good. short, short. The good news is everything is recorded. We actually, we did a good job. Yay. I like that. Good I job. like that. Um, Victory. Victory. What I don't, ah. what I don't fully know what we're going to do yet. We have talked about doing a, a gold members oh only. Oh, there he is. We're done. Gold no, members only. Bring, bring him in. Bring him in. Still recording. Bring him in. Now bring him in. Done. Come in. You can come in. Come in. Yeah, I'm going right now. Let's go. Okay, you're going to go with me? Hey, come say hi. Come, come say hi to the camera, bro. Hey, Cody and Fields. Hey, Cody, oh, come on. Oh, oh, no. Yeah. That's brutal. That's, That's my favorite best. Fields kid right Cody, there. No. Hey, for the record, I said it earlier. You're my favorite Fields. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, Allison, what are we doing for the Gold Members Only? Aren't we going to do a Gold Members Only show? Podcast early? Yes. Isn't yeah. that part of the deal? Like a special? No? No, I got to leave. Like, like, a, just, like a live face? Next thing, time. Or what? We, we talked about time. doing, for just Gold Members Only, we oh. were going to do either a pre-show or something like that. Oh. Answer oh, questions. Like, like a live Q&A. Like, like a lightning fun. round. Lightning yeah. round. After yeah. show airs, we do another show. Yeah, I don't think we we're going to invite, I don't think we were going to invite Jason, were we? No, oh, yeah, it's a different. Ooh, yeah. this is awkward. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna hit stop. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Some other podcast Hi. people might invite you to be a part of their podcast. <gasps> hey, it's the people who are part of the podcast. Get it? Get it? Yeah. Get it? The referring to when your your youth pastor gets fired, they were invited to yeah. another youth group. Oh, I get it. Oh, I felt, I feel, yeah, I felt like that was pearls before swine. The good news is I'll be able to edit it, <laughs> so no one will even know that happened. <laughs> we're saying goodbye. Bye, everybody.